Hello, quickly, let's talk about Nigeria at 64 and the progress that the country has made so far in the technology space. Now, quickly, let us talk about what it means for somebody to be 60 years old and is as if the person haven't grown at all. Research have shown that it takes about 10 hours to master everything. In other words, for like five to 10 years, you should have mastered at least one skill. Now, the question to you right now is, Nigeria is 64 years old. And if I'm to ask you, what have you mastered in the 64 years which we spent? Now, for us to understand the issues that we have and the progress we've made, we need to really understand what had happened right from the 60s. The question is, over the years, what have we mastered? Well, for us to really understand this, we need to break it down. And I've broken this video down into five parts. So we're going to be looking at the various years and what we've done. It's going to be an interesting time. So really, you need to really understand what had happened in the technology space right from that moment to this very age which we are in right now. So let's quickly dive into it. When we look at the 1960 to 1970, that is when we experienced the early industrialization and for infrastructural growth, those are the time that we really started experiencing it. Now, if you look at all of the roads, the airports, the all of the things that we have, so long infrastructure is concerned, those are the era where they set the pace of some of these things. That's why sometimes when you see some of the item or the infrastructure that we have looks very old. In the 80s towards 2000 was when we experienced telecommunication and IT emergence, right? That's when we started making calls, you know, whether you're using line line or you have to go to the post office and things like that. But that's pretty much when all of this technology begins to come to play. You know, at that point, governments begin to introduce computers gradually, computer being used a lot in the financial institutions, you know. So that's pretty much when we started seeing some level of technology, you know, not pretty much everywhere, but in, a, in certain places you would see the availability of computers. And also on October 24, 1992 was when the federal government inaugurated NCC, which we know as Nigerian Communication Commission, to regulate all of these mobile phones, networks, just to make sure that, you know, there's a, there's a body that sort of like understand and regulate how all of these space work. Fast forward to 2000. Now, this is the interesting part. This was an era when the telecommunication industry were liberalized, leading to, you know, entry level of telecommunication companies like Globacom, Airtel, MTN. That was a period when most of these guys were able to bring in some of the technologies that enabled us to be able to make phone calls, browse 2G, you know, when sometimes you would even have to climb trees to be able to browse some of these things. But I mean, they worked and they were really helpful. I want to also forget this. Those are the era when we started seeing cyber cafe. You have to buy units, go into a cyber cafe. Majority of these periods were very fun. Sometimes you get to buy 30 minutes, one hour. In fact, some of them were very nice. You buy one hour, they give you 30 minutes free and things like that. Those are ways we experienced the internet in the early days and they were very fun. Let's talk about 2010. Now, this is where we begin to experience the digital economy. Yeah, the fintech boom. And before I even talk about that, this was actually when I started my career as well, browsing the web without style, you know, some sort of ugly things, but they were fine because yes, they were fun experiencing the internet, browsing from one website to the other. Now, let's talk about the digital economy from 2010. Now, this was when we started experiencing fintech. This was when we started seeing a lot of innovation. And this period was what birth um, platform like Paystack, Flutterwave, and not to even forget, we also have platforms like the e-commerce actually came into play in this period where you're able to buy things online and you know you get delivered to your doorstep. Those are period when we begin to experience things like that. Fast forward to 2020s. Now, this is when COVID struck and you all understood what happened. And that introduced a lot of remote work and several interventions by the federal government, corporate bodies, just to make sure that the economy still stay afloat. 
But the bottom line is the ecosystem really experienced some vibrant move by the growing demand in technology, people obtaining new skills, and we saw a lot of um, collaborations between external bodies and trying to really do business with Nigeria because of the young population and how very good we are at whatever we want to do. Now, when you look at Nigerians so far, most of our successes will be from the fintech, will be from the e-commerce, will be also from some aspects of the government because some government's portals currently now run virtually you could be anywhere and obtain some of these services despite all of this progress we still have a lot of issues right and this is highly debatable in fact i can talk about this again and again but when we look at it critically we can always rely on the problem we always need to also focus on the solution as well but there are several things that as an individual we can solve and those are things that oftentimes frustrate Nigerians and actually lead to some of Nigerians leaving the country. The problems doesn't seem to be going away, especially with the rise in inflation. Some of the challenges affecting the technology space has to do with government regulation. Take for instance, one of the most frustrating things right from when I started experiencing technology is payment, you know, the restrictions from some of these payments. When you're running a business, you would have to locally buy FX to be able to finance some of the things you're doing globally. You know, that's really very annoying. The fact that you can just pick up your debit card and use it on a transaction that you want to do at any point in time. So some of these things are very, very painful and annoying. I remember when I was starting a company, it took a lot of stress to be able to open bank accounts outside of Nigeria, to be able to accept money outside of Nigeria. So it's very annoying and sometimes when we look at all of these things, they are very, very demoralizing and that's why pretty much people leave Nigeria. But here comes the question of all these issues. Should we leave? Like, should we really leave Nigeria? Should you migrate to somewhere else with better economic atmosphere to be able to do something more? Now, to be honest with you, the answer is in your hands. You need to decide because the truth is, if you want to stay in Nigeria, then you really have to stop complaining because you have to face the drum. You know, you have to really face the reality. But if you choose to leave as well, you know, you also need to be ready to face the challenges and also um, adhere to the rules and regulations outside where you're going because the way we operate in Nigeria is not the way you're going to operate elsewhere. So understanding these dynamics have a lot of role to play. But here's the thing. The way I look at things is that no one outside of Nigeria can help us fix our problem. And for us to be able to actually succeed as a nation, we can also do this on our own. So we need the combination, we need the external support, we need the internal collaborations to be able to really solve some of these problems that we have. But the bottom line is we can do this because we are Nigerians, we can do whatever we want to do. But the bottom line is I find it very difficult that to understand why sometimes when we are in Nigeria, we don't put on the A game. You know, when we find ourselves elsewhere, we more or less could even do five shift, six shift, do so many work. But when it comes to working for in Nigeria, we don't put that level of um, professionalism. And those are things that lead to us not getting the optimal result that we deserve. Now, I know some people will disagree with some of this statement, but trust me, haven't employed multiple people and see the level at which we work. You know, it's very discouraging and sometimes it doesn't really speak well of what we can do. So I am of the opinion that if we put in the best, you know, the skies are limit in this country and this thing cut across every aspect of this country, talking about the politicians, talking about even we young people, talking about everyone, you know, from the point where you set your foot out of your house, how you behave, how you communicate with others, how you carry out your daily activities, you know, what you aim to get, all of these things have what the play at the end of the day. So I believe we can build a better Nigeria. Um, this is not the best we can get at all, at any level. But I'm just looking forward to when we take the fight on ourselves and try to really get better personally. Think about it when you just fight to be the best, you know, put yourself at the forefront of what you do. No matter what is trying to set you back, just try to achieve the best, at least for yourself. You know, if you can't win as a nation, how about you win? 
for yourself. And when we have that kind of mindset generally, then we begin to have a lot of winners. And when we begin to have a lot of winners, it's going to really influence how we get to do things. So rather than some people weaponizing poverty, you know, we get to have a lot of people winning and doing greater things. So those are my thoughts about Nigeria 64. I don't know what your thoughts are, but you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Let's continue the conversation. I believe in Nigeria that can prosper and we can achieve more together. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to my channels and follow me on all my social media handles. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.